Uh, but now it's time for uh, member statements. And the first member to make a statement is the member from Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this past year has been, in has been incredibly challenging for families, especially for working parents with little ones. Many have lost access to childcare, while others have lost their income and haven't been able to afford childcare. Many parents, including a disproportionate amount of mothers, have exited the workforce entirely because they had to stay home and care for their little ones. Lack of access to childcare has a domino effect, Speaker, on not just our day-to-day -day lives, but also on our economy. My constituent, Jennifer, a woman entrepreneur, took on the task of opening a nursery in my riding of Scarborough Southwest, Little Bugs Nursery, with the intention of providing Scarborough Southwest families with some relief and a local option for childcare. Despite her spending thousands of dollars to ensure the location was up, up to par with regulatory standards, she was told that she needed to add some more fixture, fixtures if she wanted to receive the full license. She was told that in the interim, she would be allowed to operate the space for five children or less. But on Friday, to everyone's surprise, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education came and shut the center down while she was following that specific order. Jennifer has done everything she could, and she was told to ensure that the business could operate. Instead of making it more difficult for Jennifer, she should be supported by our government. Mr. Speaker, I'm calling on this government to pave the way for entrepreneurs and local businesses as we plan for a recovery. We need to work towards a feminist recovery that supports female entrepreneurs and parents in the workforce and provide access to good quality childcare. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next member's statement is, goes to the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning. COVID-19 has taught us there has never been a more important time to invest in and have access to new innovative vaccines and medicines in Ontario. I am proud of the work that our government, led by the Premier, has done to support innovation, research and manufacturing of life-saving and life-altering treatments. A strong domestic life sciences sector is so important and my community of Mississauga Streetsville is concerned about the changes the federal government will be introducing this July through the Patented Medicines Pricing Review Board, or PMPRB, which will put Canadians and Ontarians' access to new medicines and vaccines at risk. <coughs> Our government is committed to ensuring that Ontarians continue to have access to the life-saving medicines they deserve and need. As such, since last year, we have written to the federal government asking them to consult further with stakeholders and to conduct further analysis and assess impacts to pharmaceutical investments, including clinical trials, manufacturing, and access to new medicines. Yesterday, the Minister of Health and Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade wrote again to the federal government, urgently calling for these measures slated to be introduced on July 1st to be paused while we consult and assess the impacts of their changes. Many stakeholders have expressed concerns with the proposed pricing guidelines and impacts to this sector, including drug launch delays, decreased research and development, less investment, or decisions not to launch certain products right here in Canada. We're requesting the federal government acknowledge these concerns, and we need to make sure that all Canadians have the drug plans and all excessive prices while incentivizing an introduction of new and improved products. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Mishkegawak, James Bay. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to take a moment to pay my respect to all Indigenous people across Canada who are hurting in this, and in pain from the discovery of the remains of 200, 215 Indigenous children found buried in the site of former residential schools. My heart goes out to all First Nations across Canada. Mr. Speaker, I now want to bring the Minister of Health up to speed on the disturbing spike of COVID-19 cases in my riding, especially in the Cree communities of the James Bay Coast. Yesterday, the Porcupine Health Unit recorded 326 active cases. Of, of these numbers, 86 are active cases in the James Bay community. These numbers keep surging in an alarming rate. Minister, Musini declared a state of emergency last week. This, this community alone currently has 27 active cases. Fort Albany now has 27. Moose Factory, 13. Ottawa Piscat, 18. Keshesha, 1, 1. 
Speaker, I'm asking the minister to work with these communities and to work with Waha. The town of Musini has requested an extension on the field hospital, and I'm asking the minister to extend their contract. Speaker, I'm also asking the minister to commit resources to these communities as needed so that they can come out of this pandemic safely without having faced tragedy. Strate uh, tragedy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, it is times like these we come to understand the value of coming together. Today, I want to pay tribute to the collaboration between Peel Public Health, Bruce Power, and members of its nuclear supply chain to help fight COVID-19. They have partnered to create a hockey hub mass vaccination center at CAA Center in Brampton, similar to those Bruce Power and its partners have helped uh, deploy at four other locations in Grey Bruce and Lambton counties. With support from the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, led vaccination support council, companies and labor groups jumped on board to help, including Electra Utilities, Energy Solutions, Nordian, Framatom, Connectrix, NPX, CGI, BWXT, ES Fox, SNC Lavalin, Leona, the Power Workers Union, and the Ontario Building and Construction Trades Council. All of these groups joined forces to contribute and pull this clinic together in just five days. Speaker, we will only end the pandemic when we end it in every region of Ontario. I offer my sincere thanks to these groups who have demonstrated true Ontario spirit by reaching out beyond their local footprints to help their fellow Ontarians and for their help in powering Ontario forward through COVID-19. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements, the member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. The remains of 215 Indigenous children were found at the Indian Kamloops Residential School. There were children as young as three years old found in the mass grave there. I can't even begin to imagine the horror that these children face to be stolen from their homes, to be robbed of their culture, their way of life, their language, only to be murdered and killed. These are crimes against humanity. This is genocide, the gravest of injustices. And this is an injustice that each and every one of us carries. Whether you came here a year ago or a hundred years ago, we are all settlers on this land. Because the roads we drive on, our homes, our workplaces, the lives we live are on Indigenous land. Canada has failed the Indigenous community. And each and every one of us bears the weight of this failure. And it is a wrong that each and every one of us needs to right on the path to justice. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, June is Filipino Heritage Month in Ontario. And that's thanks to the member from Scarborough Southwest who brought forward the private member's bill that we passed unanimously in this legislature last month. So Ontario is home to some 340,000 people of Filipino descent. And this month, we celebrate the rich culture, diversity, and the many contributions that Filipino Canadians have made to Ontario. Many first-generation Filipino Canadians were women who came here to teach, to nurse, to provide childcare. And in fact, during this pandemic, many Filipino Canadians have been on the front lines keeping Ontarians safe. Sadly, we lost Christine Mandagarian, a Filipino-Canadian and PSW from Scarborough, early this year to COVID-19. And I know that the member from Scarborough Southwest honoured her in her debate last month, and we should do that again today. The continued dedication of Filipino-Canadians to their community and to our health and to our well-being is greatly appreciated. Speaker, our diversity defines our identity. And celebrating our common interests and our unique cultures in Ontario unites us all. And I just want to thank Alicia Natavidad from Ottawa Vanier for her continued support and advocacy and promotion of Filipino Heritage Month. And it's with pride and joy, Mabuhai. Thank you. 
Member statements. The member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the first Coptic Egyptian MPP to sit in this legislature in Canadian history. It is my honour to speak today to commemorate Global Coptic Day, the feast of the entry of the Holy Family into Egypt. That day was chosen by the Coptic Orthodox Church to mark the annual Global Coptic Day, and the icon of the Holy Family in, in Egypt was picked as a, to symbolize this event. Coptics are the direct descendants of their ancestors, the pharaohs of Egypt, and the Coptic heritage is the extension of the Pharaonic civilization grown around the River Nile for thousands of years. Mr. Speaker, Global Coptic Day is intended as a day to celebrate Coptic rich heritage, including its unforgettable history of meritorism and persecution, as well as its theological education and monasticism. This day commemorates the hundreds of victims and meritories over thousands of years. It inspires to create global awareness of the Coptic heritage all around the world, the day in the annual celebration of the contributions made by the Coptics over many centuries. Churches worldwide call Christians to fill this day with praise. Pray, read, act of mercy, invite, serve, and educate. It's no doubt that many of the Eastern churches were the saviors of the cultural uh, history of their nations. The Coptic Orthodox Church is life's testimony of care and protection of the Coptic culture, history, language, and tradition. Um, I'm proud to be Canadian Coptic standing here today on behalf of all Ontarians, wishing the Coptic community a happy Global Coptic Day. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour to stand on behalf of the great folks of Brampton North. As a critic for auto insurance, I've been trying to get this government to end postal code discrimination that we see in Brampton. We're paying the most out of all of Ontario, and it's not even close, Mr. Speaker. On average, my constituents of Brampton North pay more than twice the provincial average per year. It's unacceptable to see this government ignore the people of Brampton, especially when we're going through a pandemic. This is why the NDP, as the official opposition, proposed a 50% break on auto insurance costs for all drivers and called for a deferral of insurance payments for anyone who lost their job or income. This 50% break during the pandemic will not only help the everyday people of Ontario, but also our essential workers, such as truck and taxi drivers. I have spoken to many associations from the Taxi Association, from the Airport Taxi Association, along with their president, Rajinder Singh, and they share their concerns with me. Taxi drivers are essential workers who are on the verge of losing their livelihoods by skyrocketing insurance premiums and an inability to renew insurance policies and by COVID-19. Throughout this pandemic, we've seen their insurance go up threefold while their revenues have all but disappeared. They're being denied coverage by their insurance companies, so they must resort to facility insurance to have their taxis or have their taxis parked on the driveways. Many have chosen to park their taxis, but they still continue to pay their operating expenses. These folks, Mr. Speaker, need a break. So I encourage this government to do the right thing and make sure that they lower the auto insurance for general insurance as well as the taxi and limousine drivers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Oakville North Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. In my community, we have a neighborhood called Millcroft in the city of Burlington, whom residents consider a jewel. People have come from all over Burlington and the GTA to live and raise a family in Millcroft. Millcroft is built around a golf course that threads its way through the community, a green space that provides recreation and beautiful vistas for the people of Millcroft. Yet this green space is at risk of development. Even though it provides a haven for wildlife and helps collect stormwater preventing flooding, even though thousands in the community have opposed development through petitions and letters, to the City of Burlington and to me as their MPP. Residents have told me again and again that they want what is best for their community and their families. The Millcroft community wants to preserve its green spaces and most residents are opposed to the new development. I support them in their wish to preserve their community. The green belt and our parks and green spaces are essential for the health of our communities. 
We must preserve them, and I will do all within my ability to help Millcroft preserve its communities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next member statement, the member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much. Speaker, it's an honour to rise in the House to speak to the first celebration of Ontario Day. Speaker, when I first thought about how Ontario Day should be celebrated, I wanted to ensure it was as inclusive as possible so that every Ontarian could have this day to honour what they cherish most about our province. After all, Speaker, Ontario is one of the richest and most diverse places in the world. And whether you're celebrating Indigenous heritage or your family's recent arrival in Ontario, we should all be grateful for our beautiful province. Speaker, on this inaugural Ontario Day, I'm celebrating our province's frontline heroes, our healthcare heroes in particular. They're the best in the world, and for the past 15 months, they have worked tirelessly to protect each and every one of us. I'm choosing to take this day to honour and thank them for everything they've done for us because of their efforts to get vaccines into the arms of Ontarians. We've seen case numbers continue to go down, and as a result, Speaker, lives are being saved. And that's also why we are closer than ever to the light at the end of the tunnel. Soon, we'll all be able to gather safely with our loved ones, go back to workplaces, and reopen businesses that illustrate our communities. Speaker, after a long and difficult year, there is no better time to honour everything that makes this province the best place in the world. So to everyone across Ontario, I'd like to be the first to wish you a safe and happy Ontario Day, and I look forward to celebrating with you in person. Happy Ontario Day, everyone. Thank you. <clears throat> that concludes our member's statements for this morning. The member, I understand the member for Niagara Falls has a point of order he wishes to raise. And I recognize Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, today is Injured Workers' Day, and I seek unanimous consent to move a motion regarding the immediate package, passage of Bill 119, the Respecting Injured Workers Act, to put an end to deeming in Ontario and to ensure that WSIB treats injured workers fairly. Niagara Falls is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to move a motion regarding the immediate passage of Bill 119, the Respecting Injured Workers Act. Agreed? No. Agreed. Heard a note.